Hi. So today I want to show you how you can achieve a Celeste style hair effect where the hair follows around your character until it returns to its natural position. What you see on screen wouldn't really make up for the entire effect because you still would want some sprites to show the hair properly on your character. But the basics for how the hair follows your character should be pretty close to the original from Celeste because I essentially took the description for how to do this from a Reddit post where one of the developers actually mentioned how they did this. I will put a link to that into the description below if you want to check that out. And now let's get to it. So first of all I have a very basic setup here. If you take a look I have a player character that's just following my mouse because that's just the easiest way to have something move around. And well it's currently set as a kinematic body 2D but I'm not actually using the physics engine right now so this could just as well be an area 2D or whatever else you want. Since for test purposes all I wanted was a sprite that would follow my mouse. Now on this I also have a no 2D that's roughly centered on the head which is my hair pivot. I'm using that later to recognize where I want the hair to go. Further. I created a parent node for the player, which is going to compute the actual hair. The reason I'm not doing this on the player is because then I would constantly have to transform back and forth between local and global coordinates. Whereas here I can just never move this node to begin with and just work in the global coordinate system the entire time. So with that out of the way, you can see the player doesn't really do anything. Let's get started on the parent node, which is going to be generating the hair. Now, first of all, we're going to want to know where this hair pivot is going to be. So let's say on ready var hair pivot equals player slash hair pivot. Next, what we are going to need is a variable to hold our points. Now, I'm not actually going to create proper objects in our world for the points. I'm just going to collect some data about them in a list. So each point here will be represented by a few values. A vector 2 showing the offset on the x and y axis. This is going to be the offset from the previous point. So this isn't the offset from the hair pivot necessarily, that only applies to the first point. For all of the others, this is going to be the offset of the previous point. So next what goes in here is going to be a maximum distance. So this is just a float value which represents the maximum one circle is allowed to get away from another circle. If that is exceeded, we just move it closer. Next, we want to keep track of the current position. So we can just use another vector too and say pos x pos y. And lastly, since the circles are going to be drawn by hand, we need to keep track of the radius of each circle. So we can put a radius here and that will be all the things that go into these. So let's just make some sample points. I'll just start the first one with basically everything at zero. Because it's supposed to start right in the center of the head and never move away from there. I'll give it a radius of 10 and that's already a pretty good start. I will be adding more to that in a moment. But first of all, let's see what happens if we draw this. So we can say four point in points. This will actually be points because there's multiple. Draw circle point two, point three, color dot, let's go with green. So position two, 0, 1, 2 is our position we want to draw at. This is essentially just global coordinates because our node doesn't have a position since we're not going to be moving it. Then this here, point 3, is the radius, how large is our circle to be. And lastly, of course, the color. Let's take a look. So right now, this circle is just going to be drawn up in the corner because it can't follow the character yet. We gotta fix that. 
by adding a process function. So add process, where we can tell the point to actually follow. And finally update, because after all the processing is done, we want to update so the drawing command actually renders something new. Now, how are we going to change the position on our points? What we can do is say for i in range of length of points minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. So what we're doing here is we're starting at the end of the points list. We're taking the last index and moving back to 0, since we're going in steps of minus 1 and this value won't be counted anymore. So we go all the way to 0. Traversing our list up here backwards. Currently there's only one element, but since we want to move all of the points in one go, we need to account for them backwards because each point's position is offset from the previous point's position. If the previous point is already moved, that means all of the points would be updated instantly. I want them to be updated with a delay of one frame. So if we just do it backwards, each point gets updated based on the position the previous point had one frame earlier. So let's see. If i is equal to zero, we can't check our previous point because there is none. So in that case, we can just say points i2 is equal to hair pivot dot global position. So here we can just straight up set the position of the point and everything will be fine. We continue because we don't continue because we don't want the rest of the loop to be executed in this case. Now, since we currently only have one element, I will leave that here to do update other points. Let's run it. And there we go, the first point now correctly tracks our player's head. That's pretty much everything we can expect for now. So now to continue, we need to add some more points. So let's say vector two, let's go with minus two, three for our offset, four for our maximum distance, vector two, minus one, three, no, minus, minus two, let's go with the maximum offset. Since we haven't really moved yet, it doesn't matter anyway. We don't really need a start position. I'll just set this to zero. And we can go with a radius of eight. I'm going with roughly half or yeah, for, for our example, I'm just going with exactly half for the maximum distance. But you can play around with the numbers a bit to see what effect you like best. Now, vector 2, let's see, minus 1, 3, let's go with 3.5, vector 2.00, zero. we need that all the time, and 7. These become more interesting when they're updated in code. Now that we have a few of these, which currently aren't doing anything yet, like they're drawn up there in the corner because they exist, but their position isn't updated. Let's get to that now. So what we can do for each of these points is we can say points i2 is at the position of the previous point. So we can say i0 because we want our offset plus the previous point's position. Oh, I somehow forgot to put all of the S's. There we go. Okay, now they're already starting to follow. Now if I move very quickly, I'm not sure how well that's going to be visible on the video, but I think you can probably see that it doesn't align properly all the time. That's fine, we can go back and check to make sure that they never exceed the maximum distance we set here. To do this, we can just iterate over the thing again in the other direction. So this time we start at zero and we go all the way to the end of the list. And again, just say if i equals zero, continue, because that one can't have any offset anyway, so we don't have to worry about it. For all the others, let's see. If points i two dot distance two points i minus 1, 2 is greater than points i3. 
Let's see, is that all we need? We still want to account for our offset, so we say points i offset was the element of zero plus this. So if our distance to this thing is greater than the maximum distance we allow, that's actually the wrong number, isn't it? We want one in here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if our current point we are looking at is further away with distance two from offset plus the uh, previous point. So too far away from the point that is essentially its normal position. Then we can fix that by just saying, let's first of all get the direction equals points i minus one, two dot direction two points i two. Okay, here again, we are going to need to update this a little plus points of i zero. So we have again our previous position plus the offset. And from there, we want to see the direction to our current point. That way, we can offset our vector in that direction by our maximum distance, which is since we're exceeding the maximum distance, that's the closest we want to get. So this is still complaining because of some typo. Points, it's always the S. So let's get the offset now. This is just direction we just calculated times the maximum distance we allow and position one. So now we can update the point i2 equals points i minus one two plus offset plus our own points offset points i zero points i zero and i think that's it let's take a look let's see if everything works that does look fine so from here what we can still do is first of all let's add a few more of these lines currently still a bit short. The original Celeste used a bit more points than that as well. So let's take a look. Minus one, two, three, factor two. And six. And let's go with factor two, minus one, two, 2.5. Factor two, zero, zero, five. So these just keep getting smaller and smaller. And let's add one more, add factor two, minus one. Now let's go with just zero, one. The last one just goes down slightly, not back anymore. Two, vector two, zero, zero comma four. Let's see how this looks with more points. Okay, this is already looking quite close. So for the exact position here at the end, you can adjust that a bit to make them look however you like. Currently, they're a bit too much in a line, perhaps. So it might help to move them back a little bit more, say, three, two, one, one, zero, maybe, let's see. Yeah, something like that. You can experiment with that to see what works best for you. But that's about that. Now, the most important thing here is what you can still play around with quite a bit is this part. Currently, I'm just immediately setting it to the position of its offset plus its parent, essentially, its uh, previous node. How we can adjust that a little is we could say, for example, this is now equal to points i0 plus points i2 plus points i minus 1, 2 divided by 2. 
So now instead of setting it exactly to the position its parent was in the previous cycle, I'm instead setting it to half the way to that position. I'm just taking the average of the two positions by adding them up and dividing by two. So let's take a look. What this does is it slows down the movement quite a bit. Hmm, they do go quite far down. Let's see, let's start out with two, two, one, one, uh, why four? One I meant. See, does that look better? Yeah, now they actually go up a little bit. Yeah, it kind of depends on what numbers you're gonna set. There's a lot you can fiddle around here to make it look better. But this is essentially how it's gonna work. The rest is just a matter of fine tuning it until the hair is going to be looking the way you like. Now, from the way it looks, I would think that Celeste also added an outline shader to this. I'm not gonna be showing how to do that today, but you should be able to add an outline shader to make it look just a little bit more like Celeste. And then they still have a sprite of the hair that's kind of overlapping the front bit. So it looks a little bit cleaner than when I'm overlapping it on my necromancer who doesn't even have any visible hair to begin with, so it doesn't actually really make any sense, but you know, gotta be able to show something here. Anyway, this is roughly how you can make this work. That will be all for today. Bye.